Dear students, now we'll look at what are the RNA molecules and how they differ from DNAs and proteins as well as the specific roles they play within the biological system. During the course of this module, you can look at chapter number 5 from Bioinformatic Sequence and Genome Analysis by David Mount. It's an extremely useful text for reference. In earlier days, RNAs were considered to be a passive intermediary between the DNAs and the proteins. But modern research has shown that the RNAs play extremely important and vital roles in the biological system. There are multiple types of RNAs that have been reported. These include the messenger RNA, siRNA, microRNA, and so on and so forth. Each one of them performing a very specific and important function within the biological system. These functions are not only critical, but also very diverse in their range. So it is all the more reason and motivation to look at what are the RNA molecules and their specific functions. For that, first we have to look at how the RNA molecules differ from the DNA. So mainly there are three differences. The first one is that the thymine molecule in the DNA is replaced by uracil in RNA. So T nucleotide is replaced by U in the case of Secondly, RNA is a single-stranded versus the double strand of the DNA. Of course, this opens up a host of opportunities for the interactions of RNA molecules. And lastly, the sugar in case of RNA is ribose, which is different from the DNA and that it has an OH group extra attached on top of it. Of course, this itself lends the RNA molecule to perform a wider range of functions and interactions. So the structures of the four nucleotides are given for you here. As you can see, cytosine and uracil are pyrimidines, the single ringed molecules, one ring. And of course, there is adenine and guanine with two rings and are commonly known as purine. So these four nucleotides, A, C, U, and G, they come together, they polymerize onto the backbone of an RNA and they form RNAs of various types. The structure that is described here in this diagram for you goes like this. So a phosphate group attaches with a sugar ribose, remember in the case of RNAs, followed by another phosphate, another ribose and so on and so forth. The nucleotides A, C, U, and G, they come and attach themselves onto the sugars. So this diagram depicts a cross-section of an RNA molecule for you. As you can see at the bottom, there are two OH groups. So why am I talking about the two OH groups? The reason is that they have a very significant impact on the stability of the RNA. So the two OH groups, they render the RNA molecule towards lesser stability, which of course means greater interaction and therefore bigger number of functions. Hence, this leads to the RNA to degrade with a shorter lifespan and more labile. To summarize the RNA and how it differs from the DNAs, you can look at this figure. So the four nucleotides that I just mentioned, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and uracil given on the left side. The single-stranded RNA molecule, the structure given next to it, and of course the DNA and its nucleotide bases on the right side. The nucleotide bases in the RNA single-stranded molecule are not coupled, as you can see, versus the DNA where Hydrogen bonds, they can form between complementary nucleotides. So, not all RNAs are the same. They differ in their nucleotide sequence, which essentially means that if there are two RNA molecules with different nucleotides, they can perform different functions. And how 
does the function get imparted onto these molecules? We'll look at it later. Next, since there are multiple roles, so of course each function that the RNA molecule takes up as a result of its nucleotide sequence gets uh, enrolled for that RNA molecule. And lastly, it's important to know their various forms and structures so that we are able to work with their function.